So the next talk is uh, multimodality imaging of digital mammography. So I have a lot of cases to show you instead of, uh, because I know that you are tired of the whole day. So we will see a lot of cases that will also have ultrasound. So we will refresh the ultrasound uh, imaging that Dinah has told you. So when uh, the digital mammography in 2005, there was this DMI uh, DMIS trial in uh, the United States. The overall diagnostic accuracy of digital and film uh, mammography as a means of screening for breast cancer was, was similar in that study. And uh, so this showed two things. One, that because the digital mammography didn't have uh, as good resolution as the uh, screening screen film mammography, but this showed that that resolution, even with that resolution, it had the same uh, result. Um, but with the patients who had uh, who were uh, younger than 50 year, uh, it had a better result. The digital mammogram showed better result than screen film mammography. So the, um, this was not. <clears throat> This was the beginning, but with the digital mammography, we had this opportunity to do different things like tomosynthesis, contrast enhanced mammography, stereotoxic uh, tomobiopsy, uh, computer aided detection, and artificial intelligence that was not, not none of them was able, were, we were able to do with screen film mammography. So digital mammography uh, brought us to a different era. Well, breast imaging has three main imaging systems. It's x-ray, ultrasound, and MRI, and they have different modalities or different uh, advantages. And so we have also, we can use the uh, uh, guided, imaging guided biopsies under these uh, modalities. And so we have a lot of um, options uh, when we have the diagnostic or screening uh, patient. What is the role of mammography in multimodality imaging? It's a major screening. It's the major screening tool for, particularly for the patients, for the women uh, older than 40 years. It's a major role in diagnostic workup and differentiating um, the lesions, uh, finding the associating findings like calcifications, it's very, it's the only uh, modality that can show the calcifications, which is the indicator of DCIS most of the time. Uh, architectural distortions, retractions, and uh, differentiating findings other than mass. Also, uh, you can use it as a second look, uh, uh, second look modality uh, for MR detected lesions, although ultrasound is very effective in that effective in that. You can use also mammogram in second look. You can use, uh, it's mostly used for monitoring breast cancer patients and it's also used as a guiding modality for image guided biopsies, particularly for calcifications and architectural distortions which may not be seen with ultrasound. And also tomosynthesis only detected lesions. We have uh, difficulties in uh, detecting them or finding them under ultrasound so we can do the biopsies. The challenges uh, in mammography are the, the dense breast tissue and the calcifications are difficult to identify and architectural distortions and asymmetries. When we see these three lesions, uh, they, we cannot find them under ultrasound so it's difficult to differentiate them and make a differential diagnosis. For the breast tissue, we have four categories uh, depending on the BIRET system or the ACR system. It's from A to D. The D is the densest breast. It's all dense. You see on the right-hand side of yours, uh, it's all white. So half of the, po uh, according to ACR, uh, half of the population has these dense breasts like C and D breasts. Uh, in my, uh, in my, daily routine, it's 60%. In my country, it's 42%. And it means that almost half of the, uh, half of the mammograms that you will see are dense. 
So what a density means for in mammography, it means that it has a, it is the half of the patients and when the sensitivity is very high for ACRA and B breast, the, it is very low for the DC, for the dense breast, it's like 30%, 30-40%. Odds for internal cancers is very high for the deep breast when compared to fatty breasts. And positive, false positive findings are high. So this is a dense breast where, you, where I can say that she has cancer or she has a mass for two centimeters. Can you see it on the MLOs here? I don't think that you can find it. Or can you see on the CCs? It's two centimeters plated mass. Okay. Let me show the tomosynthesis. That's the lesion. It's a two centimeter speculated mass that we see nothing on the MLO 2D view. So tomosynthesis help, helps us a lot in sensitivity in, for the uh, sensitivity of the uh, screening in dense breast. Here you see nothing, but on the other hand, the uh, tomosynthesis view shows you a very sl small speculated mass. This is a 56-year-old woman screening mammogram she had. She had a history of colon cancer five years ago, and she didn't have a dense breast. It was almost an A-type breast. And so uh, what uh, tomosynthesis gives us, not only in increasing the sensitivity, but also in uh, diagnostic imaging, it helps us a lot. In this case, we will see it. Here we see a lesion which looks like a speculated mass of five millimeters. Uh, and here on the amylose, we see on the left side two lesions and we cannot um, decide which lesion was on the uh, CC mammogram. So we had the tomosynthesis view of the same patient. When you look, this is the speculated mass. We will see the speculations, but on the other hand, this lesion is not a real lesion. It blends with the, uh, with the fibroglandar tissue. So even it is a B-type, or you could call it an A-type breast, atomosynthesis helps us in not recalling those patients who has lesions. Here is the spot mammogram. Here you see the speculated mass better. So you can see the view preview, it's the 2D, synthetic 2D image, and on the left side it is the tomosynthesis image. So with the tomosynthesis, the speculation is better, better seen. So of course when you see a lesion, you would find it on ultrasound to do the biopsy and to delineate uh, better on ultrasound, because ultrasound has better resolution and gives more uh, information about these lesions. Here we have the LSOgram. It shows uh, in, in my <coughs> practice I use red for the uh, stiffness, and in some practices it's blue. So you would always check here. Um, check here if it's you see it is the stiff, it is the uh, soft one, and. Uh, you can also, uh, as uh, this morning it was uh, told, you can also calculate the uh, ratio, stiffness ratio, and find. Here is another case that you see nothing on the 2D mammogram, but on Thomas slice you see a speculated mass on 12 o'clock. It looks like a 12 o'clock. This is uh, one of them. The first one is the slice. The other one is the slab. What is the difference between the Thomas slice and Thomas slab? Our Thomas slices are 0.5 thickness, millimeter thickness, and the slabs are 5 millimeter thickness. Sometimes slabs helps us to show the uh, to show the structure of the masses, and most of the time it shows calcifications better. Uh, so we have we search both of them. And here is the automated ultrasound. In uh, most of our cases, uh, for screening and for diagnostic purposes, first we use the automated breast ultrasound because the coronal images gives a lot of information. Then uh, if it's a diagnostic case, then we go on with the handheld ultrasound, but we first see it on automated ultrasound. This is the coronal image on automated ultrasound, and this is the transverse image on the automated ultrasound. 
Um, so it looks like a malignant lesion that ultrasound gives you, as I told, ha it has a le better resolution, gives you more information about the lesion. Here are uh, the four uh, mass uh, definitions um, in, oh, sorry, three mass definitions in uh, by rats. It was before, um, before 2013, it was four, but now they have also a, called the lobulated mass as oval masses. So we have round, oval, or irregular masses. Round masses can be malignant. Ovals are mostly benign, and irregular ones are mostly malignant. So these are the margins that you can call. If it's circumscribed, it's mostly benign. But if it's speculated or indistinct, it means that it's malignant and it's an infiltrating lesion. Uh, it, to call a lesion uh, benign or well circumscribed, you must you must see at least 75 percent of the lesion clearly. This is a 40 year old woman. It's a screening mammogram. Uh, uh, it's a B to C type, and so maybe there is uh, there is not much you see here, but maybe there is some asymmetry here. But with the uh, tomosynthesis, you can easily see here, it is a movie that moves through the slices. Here you see the speculated mass appearing. And here is the speculated mass of the slice that, that's best, that the lesion is best seen. And here is the automated ultrasound image, the coronal image, which shows us uh, uh, the retraction of a black hole, which shows, um, which is a sign of a malignant lesion most of the time. And this is the transverse image of the automated breast ultrasound with, uh, with um, malignant features like it doesn't have a shape it, uh, and the margins are not good. So uh, you, ha you can see also the handheld ultrasound findings. And there we see the uh, elastography. It's stiff. And this is shear wave elastography. And this is the uh, Doppler uh, imaging that it shows, vas it shows vascularity, which goes through uh, directly to the mass. And this is the MR image of the same lesion. And here on the ultrasound, we saw, we saw the speculations and the retractions and some edema around the lesion, which are important ultrasound associating findings. This is a 53-year-old woman. <clears throat> um, she has a history of previous malignant tumor surgery on the right breast. And there is a lesion here. It's round. It's well circumscribed. It's very black. It's hypoechoic, but uh, on, on Doppler, we do not see any uh, vascularity. And on elastography, it, is, it looks like soft. So what do you think it is? Well, she was examined somewhere else, and someone else has seen this, and um, they ordered a biopsy because they thought that it was the relapse of the tumor at the tumor band. But it's uh, clearly, it's when you look at the mammogram, it's clearly a, a, an oil cyst because you see in the middle it is uh, black. So the black is fat. And uh, one year after this, uh, on 2017, the same patient, she had something here on MLO and on CCs that was overlooked at that time. But however, on home tumor synthesis, you can easily see that these lesions are not well circumscribed. They are speculated. And the handheld ultrasound was normal as she had a, she had a very fatty breast. The, uh, they were, they, these lesions were suspicious and they, had the, they preferred to do the handheld ultrasound and it was normal. So they sent the patient home. So would you do it? If you have, uh, if you have 
suspicious mammography findings and if you cannot find it on ultrasound, it doesn't mean that it does not exist. Sometimes in fatty breasts, it's very difficult to find the lesion that you see on mammogram. So if you see it on mammogram and if you are sure that it has some suspicious findings, then you should go on. You should do a biopsy on the mammogram or you should do an MRI. So next year, there it is. It's a, a little bit larger than before when you compare these. And still they have speculated margins. This is the 2D image. And this is the uh, tumor synthesis images. Uh, no, this is the 2017, sorry. And so they have enlarged. Here, 2017 and 2018 tomosynthesis images. And in 2018, we had the uh, automated breast ultrasound, and we have seen both lesions on both coronals. And you see on coronals, they, are, they look like uh, black holes with, splated, with retractions or splated margins. And here on ultrasound, on the transverse images of the same ABUS, uh, this one, the second one, looks like um, it has a taller than white. It's non-parallel, but the first one here, it is parallel, so it looks like benign. But however, uh, uh, coronal images are suspicious and the mammogram images are suspicious. So would you do biopsy both, to both of them or just one which was not parallel? So you would do both of them because with the other uh, with the other modalities you have suspicious findings. Here, uh, this is the handheld ultrasound finding of the same image, which is not parallel. Uh, which this is the second one. And with the Doppler finding, this has Doppler. It has no vasculature. So if you um, in the morning there was this discussion that if we have elastography negative or we have we, may, we might have elastography that shows that the lesion is soft or we might have a Doppler sign without any vasculature but if we have mammography findings or some uh, grayscale ultrasound findings which are suspicious we do the, we should do the biopsy. And this is a 43-year-old woman with multiple breast cysts. She has screening mammograms. She has very dense breasts, so a 2D mammogram won't help in these cases. So would, you, would have, uh, you would have tumor synthesis at least. And the tumor synthesis shows a mass here, uh, which is speculated. Here it is enlarged. You see that it uh, has speculated margins. And the ultrasound, she has a lot of cysts on coronal view. We, we see here the cyst, but there is something else here which, look, which doesn't look like cyst. It may be a complicated cyst, but it doesn't look like well. And this is the handheld ultrasound finding of the same lesion, which has uh, posterior acoustic features, which is enhancement. And you may, it, may, it may look like a complicated cyst, but when you go back to the mammogram, it's sure that it doesn't have good margins, it doesn't have circumscribed margins, it has splated margins. So when you combine the multimodality findings, uh, mammogram says it's quite uh, malignant and ultrasound says it's suspicious, so you should do the biopsy. And this is the MRI finding of the same patient which shows that it's malignant. So this is an invasive cancer, a luminal B-type, and 73-year-old woman with all fatty breast, which is a type E breast. Here, would you do tumor synthesis? Normally, they don't, but it helps when you have findings. Uh, here, there is a lesion where this is a screening mammogram. Then you should recall this patient for this lesion to, to make more views for spot mammograms. But if you have the tumor synthetic images, then you will see that it does not have good margins. But this uh, patient had, has been overlooked for two years because the lesion was in the, uh, in the lower, part, lower uh, part of the breast where this triangle is very important. In this triangle, most of the lesions can be overlooked. You can miss them. And this is one of the triangles that you should keep an eye on it. 
So uh, this was uh, particularly on 2019, the lesion showed uh, speculated margins here on tomosynthesis images. Here, when you compare to in, uh, compared to 2018, it's getting larger. So it's a developing lesion. It's, it warrants the biopsy. But however, the uh, ultrasound finding was a parallel lesion, a parallel oval lesion. And so the, uh, the radiologist who has seen the ultrasound called it benign. But what she couldn't um, see was the splated margins on the tomosynthesis images of this lesion on mammogram. So when you are using multimodalities, just keep the most malignant signs over the benign signs that you see in other modalities. So maybe this ultrasound finding can be a benign finding, but the mammogram shows that it's malignant. However, on um, elastography, it shows stiff, uh, stiffness. It's a 50-year-old woman. Screening mammogram shows a mass on the right upper inner quadrant. Here, it's again a type A breast. It's a very small lesion, but when you do the uh, tumor centers, you can have the uh, margin information better than the 2D images. And the ABUS image of the coronal image shows that it's a black hole with retractions, and there uh, the transverse image isn't good. And here are the handheld findings that it doesn't have vasculature, but it is stiff on elastogram. A 51-year-old woman, she had breast cancer surgery on the right breast five years ago. Here, no, sorry, it's on the left breast, the surgery was. And this is now the right breast that you have a lesion with speculated margins. It's quite malignant. And the, uh, also the tumor center shows as well. This spot also shows well. So uh, we should uh, continue on the ultrasound image to do the biopsy with this patient. Again, another screening woman, 46-year-old. Seems normal, right? But it's a C-type breast. But on the MR MLO, there is a mass. And the mass seems uh, on the tumor center's image. It looks, uh, you cannot define all the margins very well. In some cases, even the tumor centers can't help you to define the lesion very well. Then uh, this is the uh, coronal image, which shows lobulations. And, but the lobulation seems more than three, as Dinah told, more than three lobulations should warrant a biopsy. Here it looks lobulated, but we always do handheld ultrasound for these diagnostic cases. And the handheld ultra ultrasound show uh, a parallel lesion with well circumcised circumscribed margins, but it has a, a vasculature. So we preferred uh, to do the biopsy, and it was not uh, hard on elastogram. Uh, it was a fibroadenoma. 38-year-old woman, diagnostic imaging for a lump on the right breast. And so in diagnostic imaging also, uh, Thomas, we use tomocentes all the time, particularly for these cases with denser breast. And here on the right hand, uh, on the right breast, you can easily see a lesion here. And here on the tomocentes, you can see the speculated mass now coming. It's playing now. You see the slices are coming. Here is the speculated mass. And this is, the Thomas, uh, this is the ABUS image of the coronal image and the transverse ABUS image. And the handheld ultrasound with elastography shows that it's stiff. But in this case, I don't have the good images here. With the uh, ABUS images, we have seen uh, three or uh, three more uh, foci, and we prefer to do the uh, MRI here, and she had a lot of foci. It was a multicentric cancer. 
43, 42-year-old woman here. Uh, small calcifications just over the, on 12 o'clock uh, over the uh, nipple here. Uh, when we see uh, calcifications, we always perform MRI because MRI gives more information about the calcifications and it, 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 it gives more information about their distribution. Uh, sometimes you may not find anything on the MRI and if you don't find anything on MRI, then you have to uh, rely on your mammographic findings, not on MRI findings. And on ultrasound, we do automated ultrasound in cases we see calcium uh, calcifications. Here we have found a lesion, a suspicious lesion, which was far away from the nipple, the area where the calcifications were here, but here it was. And uh, over the nipple, we have seen on the 12 o'clock, we have seen some dilation of the ducts. And on MRI, it, it, this is the suspicious lesion that we detected on ABUS and we have found it on uh, ultrasound. It was, uh, it was one part of the uh, DCIS. It was a uh, large, very large DCIS here, you see it. But on mammogram, it was a very small calcification focus. So MRI helps you to understand the uh, extent of the uh, DCIS in cases of calcifications. That's why we always do use it. So it was easy for us to do the uh, to do the biopsy under ultrasound guidance because ultrasound guidance is cheaper and easier. So we did the ultrasound guidance and we had the result. And so we had we have four different types of calcifications in mammography imaging that are. Uh, moderate uh, suspicious are heterogeneous and amorphous calcifications. High suspicious are uh, linear branching calcifications and pleomorphic calcifications. So when you do, when you are doing MRI, in our uh, study, we have found that uh, when uh, when it's linear branching or pleomorphic, if you have negative MRI findings, you should do the biopsy. But with the heterogeneous or amorphous Calcifications, if you have a negative MRI finding, you may stop, but it depends to your clinical decision. This is a 44-year-old woman. Uh, she was having a screening mammogram. Here you see a segmental calcification where you can easily find it on ultrasound here, uh, dilated ducts here. It's the DCIS. These are the uh, ABUS automated breast ultrasound images. And this is the handheld images, almost identical with the ABUS image. And there we, you can easily do the uh, biopsy under ultrasound. But be careful, you should take a specimen radiogram of the biopsy you did, and you should show that you had biopsy the calcifications. It was a DCIS. And this is another case with calcifications here. Again, the MRI showed the extent of the lesion. It was larger than seen on mammogram. And so we have found it under ABUS, automated breast ultrasound. And this is the identical image on handheld image that we did the biopsy under ultrasound. And here you see the calcifications on specimen radiograms. You should always do this if you are doing it. This is a case of breast cancer patient, same, uh, it's the surgery bed, it's a uh, uh, relapse of the disease, and same uh, with the MRI, the extent, you see the extent, and ultrasound, you can see the lesion well, and this is the, this is the specimen radiogram. So you can do the stereotoxic biopsy under MRI. This is the Scott image, and this is the 15 degree images. Tomorrow you will have the opportunity to see this. You have two 15 degrees images to have the stereotoxic uh, positioning, targeting of the lesion. This is where the, uh, where the needle comes in. We use the uh, upright positioning of the patient with lateral approach of the needle. Here is the needle approach. This is the lateral approach, which is easier in my opinion. But some people prefer the horizontal approach. This is uh, the, another case where we had uh, retracted calcifications and 
always take the mammog uh, spe specimen mammogram to show the calcifications. Another case here, the calcifications are very small, and this is the scout and 15 degrees images, and the, uh, and the needle is in the place, and we, you do the, after, take, after the biopsy, you should check the area if you have retracted the uh, calcifications well, and always a specimen mammogram to show that the calcifications are out. This is a very uh, small other case, and same, and the specimen mammogram. So there is another uh, possibility that there is this prone table. It's, e it's, say, it's more easier uh, for the patient. It's more comfortable, I can say. And, and you do approach uh, horizontally in these cases. Same 15 degrees images, then always take the specimen radiogram. Uh, in some cases, lesions cannot be seen on dense breasts. Uh, even on uh, tumor synthesis, it may not help. But there is this asymmetry here. Even the ultrasound may not give much information. But here she has uh, abnormal lymph nodes in the axilla. Then MRI will help you to understand what the lesion is. And this is a lobular cancer. Lobular cancers are most of the time uh, hard to detect on mammograms or on ultrasounds. The best way to show them is the uh, contrast enhanced MRI. And the last but not the least, the contrast enhanced mammogram helps us. This is a lesion. It looks like a one lesion here, uh, but with the contrast enhanced mammogram, you see a lot of lesions. It's a multicentric uh, cancer here. So CSM, a contrast enhanced mammogram, can detect a lot of lesions and uh, able to detect mammographic occult additional lesions superior to mammogram, and almost it is uh, comparable with the MRI contrast-enhanced MRI. Uh, it, you can use it for calcifications as well. Here you see some calcifications. And here uh, the contrast-enhanced mammogram shows us the lesion uh, that the calcifications are contrast-enhancing with contrast material. So with the calcifications also, it helps. It has a um, good specificity and sensitivity. And it is uh, tolerable and it's, it can be comparable with MRI and you can use the MRI virus lexicon with it. Also, you can use it in problem solving, like in this case, you see a lot of lesions here, uh, but on mammogram, you don't see anything, almost anything. And here is the MRI, it's comparable, but it's not, because MRI has slices, it's not as evident as MRI, but when compared with the other breast, you, you can see a lot of multifocal lesions are there. Uh, also with the uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, this is with, uh, from uh, be before the neoadjuvant chemo, and here after the neoadjuvant chemo, and before we didn't have the contrast enhanced mammogram, but after you can see that it's not, uh, the lesions are smaller, but still there. And this is the MRI findings, almost comparable. Uh, we also use sometimes for dense breast screening for high-risk patients because they cannot go into uh, MRI. So we prefer to do the uh, contrast-enhanced mammogram and you can see clearly the breast, or, although the breast is very dense and dirty uh, with calcifications, so you can clearly send the patient home for one year. Another case with a lot of lesions, a lot of cysts you see here, and so uh, the, uh, also uh, contrast enhanced mammogram has background enhancement here you see, uh, but it's not as evident as MRI. So take home messages, mammograph findings can lead to positive diagnosis even in the abs absence of a apparent lesion. So you should be very careful 
uh, tomosynthesis is very effective in screening and in diagnostic approach, so we always prefer to do the uh, tomosynthesis. Uh, and we do, we, we, uh, we take synthetic views, we do not take any more 2D views. Calcifications, MRI is more, into equico, uh, more informative in equivocal cases, but in calcifications, adding MRI can help you to understand the extent of the disease. CSM is a new promising tool that can that might not be displaced, but that can be used uh, in cases where the patient cannot go under MRI. Thank you for your uh, attention. Um, this is a mammogram of a rose. <laughs> Thank you very much.